There we go. Well, thanks everyone for coming. So, and shout out to John uh, for arranging the alumni like uh, webinars and so that we can uh, connect the current Circle Cares to the alumni. I think that's really important. I'm really glad uh, we're able to do so. And so um, he's at work right now, so no worries about that, but it's great to um, be here. And so, yeah, so uh, when John asked Toki, and uh, because I, I don't have Facebook, but uh, so he posted in the wall, and then Toki then approached me about hosting it with her. And if you know Toki, you know you can't say no to her. She's the best and sweetest person ever, so here we are. And so we Token and I were thinking, what, what can we provide? Like what experiences can we share that, uh, that we have, um, that would be really useful and beneficial for this time. And we were thinking about how, well, we've only been out of school for like two years, so we're not that far into careers or anything like that. But I thought one thing that we could really share that would be great would be the first six months of college that no one really talks about. Um, because when we talked about being an alumni, uh, we talked about how the first six months were really hard and there's a lot of challenges you don't really expect um, after graduating. And there's kind of things they don't talk about. Like there's kind of like, you know, this like uh, fairy tale, like right off in the sunset where you walk on stage, you, uh, you get your diploma, you walk off and then you start your dream job. And, it's not like that. It really isn't. Not for everyone, of course. Um, for some people, which is great. But I think uh, there's a real, there's a, there's a realistic six months after college that, uh, that people don't talk about that we wanted to share. And at least our two adult, and adultal experiences. Um, that's really all we can share. We haven't done a, you know, a peer-reviewed journal study on like the first six months of college students. At, you know, like this is just our stories and we wanted to share it. Um, and I'm so happy there's so many alumni in this chat. So uh, hopefully we can uh, share at the end. I would love to hear other people's experiences and um, two, because that's great. What's better than two alumni hosts is four or five, six or seven. So yeah, and the theme about it, uh, you'll see our theme is like coffee shop. You know, we didn't want to make a like a lecture PowerPoint uh, you know, we're not like professors. We're not here to drown you with bullet points. Uh, we're just here to talk and share our experiences. So let's go. So you're a host. And so for those of you who don't know us, um, or is Toki here? Can she answer? Yeah, I'm back. Okay, Toki, why don't you start? Uh, you can okay. go through. So my real name is Tokuko <laughs> Sato. But when by Toki during um, during my Circle K time. Uh, I graduated spring of 2018 with a uh, bachelor's in business admin and marketing. Um, I was the PR chair during the 2017-2018 term and I just want to say I'm really impressed by what's happening on the social media pages this year. So kudos to the current chair. Sorry, Ooh. I'm not sure who it is right now. Um, currently, I work as a creative design intern for the Port of Long Beach, which is the harbor department for the city of Long Beach. So it was, it's been quite an honor to be work, working for the city that I enjoy living in. And then on the side, I also do some freelance graphic design. Yeah. <laughs> to Ethan. Right on, Toki. So my name's Ethan. I graduated fall 2018. Uh, I graduated my major was psychology and I minored in child development and family studies. Uh, I was in Long Beach CKI for my whole time. I absolutely loved it. Um, so wonderful. So I'm happy to be an alumni, of course. And yeah, what I do now is I work with kids with, uh, with autism. And so kind of like a therapist right now, um, just working at an agency. And so in like the kind of private sector. Mm -hmm. So yeah, let's get right into it. Okay. Toki story time. <laughs> so I guess it's more, we're just going to be talking at the camera about our experience, experience. Just like we decided not to be really scripted and just be off the cuff. Like however, however we feel going at it. <laughs> Oops, sorry. Tell me when you okay. want to go. Um, you don't know. That's fine. You can advance to the next one. So oh, okay. I think a, pic a picture that describes 
my whole like first six months experience was this mug. Um, I accidentally <laughs> broke a mug while I was washing it and it said, keep, keep dreaming. And at the time it felt like it was the end of the world. Like, oh, everything is crappy and bad. But I, reflecting on it now, I saw a different view of this and I'll share that at the end of my story. Um, you can go back to the next slide, Ethan. Mm -hmm. So to start my first six months, I guess the process before like graduating, I've been working at a business center at LBCC as a student assistant. And I was just a marketing ex assistant there and did a lot of graphics for them. And they, it was a small team. So I did a lot of work and they trusted me to help them with a lot of things. So as I was approaching graduation, so month one, I would count in the May, um, June, um, they were like, oh, I think we could get you a full-time position. And, you know, coming out of college, that sounded really nice. Like, wow, I get to, I get that job right, right away. Like I, I did it, <laughs> but it was only a false sense of hope, um, I think. Uh, maybe like a week before graduation, they told me that they might not be able to do it because of a lot of restrictions under LBCC. And um, I thought that I should have followed up with it sooner rather than assuming that I was going to get this like full time opportunity. So even though it was really nice, you know, finally graduating and walking that stage, going to commencement, I like entered my panic mode and started applying for jobs since I put that aside, assuming I was going to get this job. Um, yeah. <laughs> so I knew I had to start job hunting in the June, but I couldn't fully focus on that because I had to move apartments at the time. Um, that takes for people who know like what it is like to move, it takes a lot of energy to focus on it, you know, finding the right place, making appointments to go check the place out and whatnot. And like packing and everything takes up a lot of mental, or took up a lot of mental space for me. So um, I couldn't focus on jobs. So I gradually went into Ju July, um, early July, finally settled into my apartment. I also thought a little bit because Anime Expo was happening. I, was, I thought, you know, I'm going to have a little bit of fun before I start stressing. <laughs> and um, after that, I fully went into my panic mode of being like, oh no, I need to get a job because I only have this student assistant job for until August because I can't work there after I graduate or in the computer center time. Panicking for the computer now. Okay. And thank you. And I didn't know what to focus on. I thought I had an idea when I was graduating, but uh, with my degree in marketing and business, I had options to go into marketing, sales, social media, communications, and whatnot. But I also really like to do graphic design, even though I have no credentials for it. I just have things to, you know, show. And I thought office, office experience, so I thought I could do whatever office jobs. So it was just a mess. It wasn't, I wasn't really organized on what I wanted to focus on in to applying. So I was pretty much applying to everything that I could. Um, but while I was job searching, I found a personal obstacle of not being able to drive. I, haven't, I had no driver's license. I had no car, so I couldn't really go anywhere and then the bus could only take me so far as well like I think within Long Beach is better than some cities but especially going between cities it was really hard it could take up to like two three hours for me to go to Torrance for example and then I just moved in to a new apartment so I felt like I couldn't break the lease and maybe go somewhere wherever the job was so I had to stay in Long Beach and then throughout the, throughout July, 
um, you know, as interviews come in maybe like two weeks later, depending on where you apply. Um, on one of the applications, I got in touch with a recruiter and I personally have been really bad with working on like professional development, like any career skills. There'll be like workshops out there for people to sign up to. And I know there's like all my resources, but I don't know why, but like it's always been a hurdle for me and I never been able to get myself to look into those. So this recruiter, being able to talk to this recruiter helped me understand like the job, like the job process. She helped me um, with interviews and she even looked at my resume and made like recommendations for me. Like if you ever like get in touch with a recruiter, they will do whatever they can to help you. Cause, cause you know, it's their job to get you a job. So I think it's a blessing whenever you run into a really nice recruiter. <laughs> um, so through her, I got my first major prospect in, you know, month two. Um, it was, it's for, I don't know how to describe it. The company is called House Boots. It's pretty popular, but it's just like low key popular. If you look them up, you'll see that they're like the main tofu manufacturer. And I thought it was really cool because it was a brand that I grew up with and it's a Japanese company. And that's something I always wanted to do. And this interview went really well. The panel of like three or four people really liked me and like, I'm bilingual in Japanese, so that really came in handy too. But we're like, the the vibe was really good during the interview, and I thought, wow, I did it. I could probably get this job. But one question sent like the whole mood down, and it was really upsetting. Um, the question was, how do you, how will you get to work? And that's when I had to admit that I didn't drive, and that's when they like like basically turned me down um my recruiter was really encouraging and um told me to send him like a counter argument to say that i'll be fine like i can take the bus i can figure out ways to make it work but going from long beach to garden grove was like two plus hours one way and the panel was all women so they were really worried about me especially for like the darker time like when I had to like get off of work at night. So I like begrudgingly, you know, accepted the fact that I wouldn't be able to get this job. So I say that was like the first crack in my mug. I was like, man, this sucks. I really wanted to work for this company. Um, Cause I really wanted to share with my parents about this prospect. Like, hey, you know, this company that we like, is, is there a food company? So it's like, oh, remember this meal that you make? Yeah, this company like makes the stock for this and whatnot. So yeah, it was really sad not being able to tell my parents this. And, but out of that, yeah, you know, I finally found the real motivation to help me learn how to drive. So yeah. Um, Month three is August for me. It's becoming crunch time. Um, I only had the student assistant job till the end of August. So I was like super stressed. I even started considering retail jobs so that I would have some kind of income. But lo and behold, my supervisor at the business center found a loophole. And she proposed that I start working for them as a freelance contractor rather than trying to fill or trying to create and fill a full-time position. So I'm currently working as, for them as a graphic designer and social media consultant. So I was able to, you know, find my footing income-wise. And a great thing about being a freelance is that the hours are flexible. You're not always guaranteed work, but you can, you know, work whenever you want, wherever you want. So I didn't have to go into the office anymore. I just worked at home. Um, as a student assistant, I was paid minimum wage, but I almost started getting double that. But another 
but it's like you think about being a contract is that um, they don't take out taxes. So you owe the taxes. So my first year, I owe like $600 in April, which hurt, but it's okay. And then, oh, you also don't get benefits. So you're just basically, you know, working project by project. But it was a, you know, it was a good thing during that time because I didn't have anything going on. And um, I didn't have anything going on. And then my mental health was not good at all because I was so stressed out about um, finding something post-grad. And then after getting that, I gave myself a little break because I really needed it. And I think these mental, like, Giving yourself mental health breaks are really important. So I start, um, I socialize with friends more because I felt better seeing people and telling them that I had good news to tell them. And then, yeah, I ended August on a better note than when I started. And month four is September. It was, you know, kind of around this time or a few weeks earlier. It felt really weird to not go to school like I've been for 12 years. It's like, I didn't go through the stress of signing up for classes, worrying about tuition, textbooks, going to school physically. It's like, I also started working from home. So I'm like, I'm just here all day. Like I don't have anywhere to go or any reason to go. And then I didn't want to bother friends who were still students because you know, I wanted them to focus on school. So it was a weird time for me. And then I feel like a lot of, you know, graduates could share that for like for people who didn't decide to go right back into to school. Um, yeah. It's hard to describe it, but it's a really weird feeling that you're you're gonna have to go through. Um, so you know, September and the spirit of education, I started learning how to drive. Um, kudos to Kim. Thank you for helping me learn how to drive. <laughs> and through that, I also found, or no, not through that. During that month, I also found a new job prospect working for a restaurant franchise. Uh, it was only um, part time, but it was a graphic design position. I'm familiar with the restaurant business, so I thought it was pretty cool to work for, the off for an office related to that but it was in Torrance and it probably took me two and a half hours one way and maybe three different buses just to get from home to the office. It was really tough, but it was, you know, it was something. So I got interviewed twice, got the job offer at the end of September and then, you know, just got ended my September working two jobs. So it was wild times. October, um, month five, I was adjusting to new schedules. I was working three days a week, eight hour days at this new office. The, um, the office was like really quiet. It was just me, two other ladies and the president working there. So it was like super quiet. I really hated like the awkward silence. So I would just like listen to music all day. Um, that was kind of draining. And then, um, like I said, the bus route was really long too. So that was super draining. And I'm glad it was only three days a week. And then the rest of the time, I also did my contract work with the business center. And then I was running out of drive, navigating a relationship. I was like really tired, but you know, things were looking better for me. <laughs> and, you know, I thought, things were going well. Um, I just have to get used to it. Everything's good. But no, <laughs> things were not good. Um, Mid-October, I got let go by that company or by that restaurant business or restaurant company that I started working for. You know, I thought I was doing good, but um, the reoccurring issue of me needing to drive came up. So they needed someone who could travel to the other franchisees locations. And then the two ladies I was working at were concerned for my 
safety during my bus commute. Something that I heard maybe three months prior with that other company. So I was like, oof, why is this happening again? And then the president told me just to say that I was hired on a project basis, so it doesn't look like I got fired or laid off on a, within like a few weeks. Um, I think it really stung because I didn't get any warning. I was brought in to a meeting assuming we were going to talk about a project that I just worked on, uh, which we did. That was the beginning. And then he transitioned to how I felt about working there. And then it's kind of a blur because it was like it became repressed memory. But, you know, basically told me, you know, I can't work there anymore. I couldn't work there anymore. I was basically handed my last paycheck right on the spot. And I was getting home early. And that was really... That was really upsetting. Like it, it was the longest, like the bus ride is already long, but it was the longest bus ride home. I was really sad and mad all at the same time. Um, but, or before I went home, like the two ladies, one is like older and one is younger, but they're kind of like aunts to me. The younger one, I could tell that she didn't want me to get let go. So she would like walk me out and then like, I think since I don't go home that much, it was like really meaningful to receive some kind of like motherly love right there. So it's like, oh man, this really sucks because I really, um, I really like um working with her too. So I think that that was like the saddest way I could leave a job. I hope, <laughs> or I hope that's the saddest way I could leave a job. Not one word. Um, yeah. So that was probably the worst experience in my job searching experience. Um, yeah, things could get really sucky like that. And that led to like, you know, really messing with my mental health. And then usually I would just, you know, bounce back, it's fine, whatever. I'll keep searching, but I definitely took the time um, between October and November to give myself some time to recover. Um, I had the habit of recording everything on my calendar. I also looked through my emails while I was working on this and I saw that I I definitely scheduled more hangouts with people so that I could like heal and process all this like stress and anxiety I was going through and um, you know have some more positivity in my life. Um, yeah, but, you know, I was let go from this job, but I still had the other job to help me through. And approaching month six, November, honestly, like the first, like the title slide says, this goes on months and months after, but we're just gonna, you know, basically try to stop around month six. So it's November for me. Um, you know, it's basically November equals holiday season. So it's in the holiday mentality. You know, it's, I won't take it personally if companies don't get back to me for interviews. Maybe they don't want to do new hires and whatnot. Whether if, if this is true or me just like, you know, helping myself not feel as bad. Um, I decided to focus more on socializing. I even went back home after few months you know and try to like not like get back to my roots but you know like reconnect with people I don't really see and um you know I was financially I was doing okay that wasn't my worry but it's just like the I guess the status of having a job like a you know that lofty full-time job that everyone goes for as post grad but you know, basically don't give up, I guess is my message. Like keep on applying, you know, month six, I still didn't really have anything happening. And, um, you know, not much interviews, but month six was when I first applied for my current for the Long Beach internship. And that I feel like 
after looking back and trying to work on this, I thought it was cool that my six months was my turning point. So I won't keep going past uh, month six, but basically rest of history. I followed up maybe five times because they took forever in the process, but you know, I finally got it and it was a really great thing. Um, I went through a lot in the six months, a lot of ups and downs. Um, my, my mug broke. My bro mug broke technically in December, um, but you know it still encaptures everything. I thought at the time, like, wow, keep dreaming. Like, I found a broken mug as is saying it's or telling me like to stop dreaming. But <laughs> I showed us to Easton earlier, and we kind of like talked about it, and it was more like it broke because it couldn't contain my potential anymore like my dreams were overflowing so and then I outgrew this mug because I got this mug when I first moved or when I first moved out so that was like 2016 and then it, it broke after I graduated so <laughs> cheesy but you know it's like I outgrew this mug and it's time for me to um I don't know how to phrase it but I didn't have to keep dreaming because things were happening and I was making them happen. So instead of dreaming, I was like doing it, you know, it's making my potential happen. So I guess <laughs> it's a cheesy way to end my six months rant. Yeah. <laughs> I think that's a beautiful way to end it. Yeah, I think that's a great way to look at college is that you're working towards something, you're kind of dreaming of it, but you're still going through the classes, going through the motions that you know, Long Beach kind of tells you to do. And then, yeah, once you leave it, you got to make it happen. And so, yeah. Mm -hmm. And look at you now, Toki. I know. I'm sorry. I know you didn't touch it too much, <laughs> no. <laughs> but I just want, yeah, I think that's great to take, off, take from it as well. Like, yeah, doing great now with the port and everything. That's so exciting. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. I'll touch more on it during question time, but you can share for anything. All right then. Oops, wrong way. Which way is it? There we go. So yeah, for me, uh well one, thank you for sharing such a such a really meaningful story, Toki. Um I hope that we can um yeah, I hope that current students can remember that and that um, you know, job hunt process isn't easy and that um, it's okay that uh, that you go through these struggles because we all do. And yeah, it's hard to follow up Toki, but I'll try my best. But so, yeah. yeah, and I wanted to, I thought that uh, I, yeah, my story is a little bit different. I think that's, a, it's a nice, uh, it's a nice, uh, not necessarily a foil, not, but it's just a nice compliment to it. Because, um, yeah, also, too, my six months after college weren't great. Uh, it was a very low point. And I, so to begin the story, uh, yeah, so I finished in December. And, but I was with class of 2019. So I waited to walk until, you know, the next spring. And I feel like that not having that closure and losing almost that like identity of being a Long Beach student was so hard. And that'll be the theme throughout kind of my six months. Um, when I started in, uh, so let's say end of December, finish classes. It's all exciting. We're all done. Uh, it's a holiday season. And so it feels great. But then after a few weeks, I think about what am I going to do for work? What am I going to do for jobs? And before I already had this feeling of not being ready for life outside of college. Um, Cause I worked at a place with, or I worked at like an agency with children with autism um, in college, but because I worked there, uh, you know, throughout college and they saw me over the years, I didn't feel like I was like ready. I still felt like insecure and I still felt like that I wasn't ready to be like, a real like therapist working with kids like having that responsibility um I just 
I didn't feel I was ready for it. So I got nervous. And so, and I, but also wanted to really look at myself and I thought, why don't I feel ready? Like I did a lot of uh, good and important things in college, but I decided that I just didn't feel like almost like an adult yet. And so the way my zero to 100 mentality works is that, well, I'm going to leave the country. So then I, I started the process to go uh, teach English in Japan because I wanted to really challenge myself personally. But a lot of it was from insecurity of not feeling ready to even begin a job at home. And I don't, if that, I'm not sure if that makes sense, but that's just what I was going for. So in January, I find out that uh, I had to apply in November. January comes out uh, and I get an interview. I'm super excited. Uh, but it's just one step in this long process. So I, if I were to be accepted, I wouldn't leave until July. So my first six months, I would not have necessarily the job I wanted. I would have to continue through the application process, you know, interview and wait it out. And so that was really hard. And so I was really excited in January to hear about getting an interview that would be held in February. Um, but once everyone went back to school uh, in January for spring semester, I felt like really lonely. Like I felt like, oh, wow, I'm done. But I didn't have that, you know, that moment. Like I didn't walk across the stage in my cap and gown. Uh, I wasn't, you know, we weren't going to graduation parties. Like it wasn't like, it didn't feel like the, you know, I finished, I graduated college. Like it felt like I just, I literally, my last, final was just a paper so I just turned in the paper and left and that didn't that yeah that didn't feel like satisfying at all I almost didn't get that closure um and so I felt like I was in this weird bubble where um and this is where I focus more on the emotional part of my story um is that I felt like I lost so many identities um like I lost uh, you know, being a student at Long Beach, I lost being a circle care with all my friends. I lost even just simple things like working at the library. Like I worked at the library for so long and so many people knew me for the morning shifts uh, that even I would get recognized on campus just for being working at the library. So like not working at the library and also not working as a college like intern at the autism place. Like I lost so many identities and I wasn't sure, like, I felt like I didn't have that closure. Like I didn't finish like with that, like with like the ceremony, like all my friends were still, you know, we were waiting for the walk in spring. And so they have one last, one more semester. And I just, yeah, I didn't handle it well. Um, I felt really lonely and I just was trying to do job searches for, I couldn't commit to a large job because I wanted to hopefully get the job to move to Japan. So I just applied at small places, just part-time work. And, but, uh, you know, I barely got any like, yeah, callbacks or anything like that. Did indeed, uh, went to local places around my house and just walked in and handed in my application. Um, but yeah, eventually I found something in February at a local like private elementary school, just a beast recess staff but by that point it didn't feel like like this is like the big journey the big adventure like I was just you know I was just working part-time you know like I don't know it just did it it I was still waiting and trying to work to be able to go to Japan and and but I also almost didn't feel like I didn't graduate because of you know I hadn't you know, didn't walk yet. And all my friends were still in school. I, I just, it was a really hard time mentally and I really isolated myself. Um, and I've kind of learned that without like, you know, being in college and being surrounded by your friends all the time, like being able to go to the library and find people being able, you know, being in the same classes, being in the same organization, you know, you're just naturally around friends. You don't have to, you know, really, you know, it's, go out of your way everyone's there but uh after college i just mentally just got in a really bad like feedback loop of you know i just 
I'm not a college student anymore. Like, I don't want to bother my friends. They're all, you know, busy. They all, you know, and then I was like, should I move on? Should I like, should I like, yeah, I need to like work and try to get, you know, on my next adventure in Japan. And, and yeah, so that was a really tough time. I ended up in, as you know, my friends know here who, uh, like I deleted like all my social media, like wiped everything clean. I was just like, the internet was a bit of like an unhealthy, like place for my like mentality. And I just, yeah, I wanted to just, I don't know. At the time, I think it was good because I, being off like social media is like really refreshing uh, in the sense that you can just really focus on yourself. But at the same time, I disconnected from so many people. And then, yeah, when the time finally came, uh, I had an interview, got, uh, I thought, yeah, I was happy about it, but I still wasn't sure. And then I move on to, yeah, the months come keep coming March March was a really great turning point because I got to go on a vacation uh with my girlfriend and that was a really awesome experience but then after that that's when I that's the moment I deleted all the social media right after it's just I I just it was it's still really hard to explain I'm still processing all the really hard feelings but she really got me out of it and got me out of the house um, well, we had to, we had plane tickets, but she, she really did. And yeah. And so by the time I think that I left to go, um, thankfully, like, I'm really grateful that I got, I got in and I left. And, but that was such a weird, like, it was such a difficult time transition, losing so many identities. Um, and not reaching out to people, not reaching out to friends. And yeah, I just think it's, if I can give any advice, I just, when I look back on it, so much of your life, you spend four years at such a special place with such amazing people, all working towards the same goals, you know? And so to, once you graduate, once it's gone, it's really tough and it's not you don't have that purpose you don't have those connections um or those immediate connections of seeing people all the time you know going to work like on campus or whatever and yeah so it was really hard losing all those identities and also still feeling insecure about going into the workforce uh and and trying to make it here and so yeah, it was almost like escapism. It was like, so going to Japan was to, to grow and to challenge myself, um, which I think is like my mentality in most things. Um, but in a way it was also, I lost so many of my identities. I wanted to just like escape almost, you know? And going to Japan was a really great opportunity to reset like I got to learn so much about myself because I was so away from everyone. Um, even my own home, my own like family, like living on my own in like the middle of the countryside, I really got to for, form my own identity. Like not just, I'm not a student at Long Beach. I'm not just, you know, uh, you know, a worker at a library. I'm not just like, you know, I, because, I got to really form my own identity, like my name, like I'm Ethan, you know, this is the crazy adventure that I'm on right now. And I think that's what I really needed. Um, and yeah, so my advice to you is that, uh, you know, when you graduate, you're going to lose a lot of really important identities, I think. Uh, but it's, it's now kind of what Toki said, it's now to stop, it's time to start dreaming, it's time to make it happen. You form your new identities and it's hard. Um, and that's the part for me that like no one talked about. Um, and who knows, maybe that's just more of my struggle, uh, the way I, how strongly tied I was to Long Beach and 
And speaking of even our graduation in May, it was like raining and everyone left uh, anyway. So like, I didn't even get that great moment throwing up the hats. Like it was raining. And once everyone went up stage, they just left. I think shout out to Kim. Kim stayed and I was, I was so impressed. I, uh, I was just out of there, but yeah. So things don't always work out exactly how you want them to or how society says they do. And it's our jobs to, uh, to continue on and to form those new identities and not give up. Um, even though, whether it be like more the emotional side or even more like the physical, like job searching side, you know, that's, I think those are the parts that people don't necessarily talk about, um, you know? And so, yeah, Toki and I just wanted to share our stories and, um, and it's still an ongoing process. Like I just got back from Japan last month. So I need to reach out to everyone again. And I need to re like, you know, I still need to continue growing as a person, but I think that sharing stories and sharing struggles and hopefully people can learn from, uh, you know, our, our stories uh, is really valuable. And that's what alumni are here for. So I'm a pretty open book. I'm not afraid to uh, share my, my many blunders, but yeah. Well, sounds good. So that is my story. And so let's get into, now just to end, I know that it's been, oh my gosh, it's already been an hour. So yeah, uh, <laughs> yeah sorry, it's a Friday night for everyone. Um, I guess we did have questions submitted, which is great. If we, maybe Toki and I can like fill them out later. Um, because I don't know how much time we want to use here. Uh, it's People's Friday nights and it's been an hour. And so uh, I'm sure I speak for Toki too when I say that this is so wonderful. Thank you guys for coming out. Um, are there any questions before we, uh, yeah, before we conclude? Also, any other alumni? If they, oh, sorry. Uh -huh. uh, uh, I was like, if we could get a feel of the room, I guess, if they don't mind us going through some questions or if we, you know, if it's a good stopping point. But I don't, I don't mind either way. Yeah, or if any other alumni want to share their stories too. What do you think, Ricardo? Uh, for this, um, if anyone does have any questions, uh, you can use the raise hand function. Uh, so all you got to do is go to the bottom of your screen and go to participants and there should be something on your right that says raise hand. Um, I'll call on people and if no one has anything, um, you guys can read off your questions and if any other alumni want to share, then you can also raise your hand. Um, yeah, sounds good. It's okay if you already filled it out in the form and just want to, you know, ask them in person here, you could do that too. Uh, Jay Chell. It's either Jay Kim or Rochelle, one of them is asking. Um, for like the postgrad people, how do you, what's your advice on how to get over that slump of like, like applying for jobs and then not hearing back and then have, like keeping up that motivation. Mm, it does really, it, it really does get discouraging. I think I applied to like maybe a hundred plus jobs during my job search. And I think, I think like rewarding yourself when you do get that interview is like, I think giving yourself little rewards throughout the process is nice, like not being like, oh, it's just another interview. Oh, I don't know. But instead of being more positive about it, like, hey, I got this interview. It's more practice, more experience. I can give myself boba, like I deserve this. And um, I think for companies, 
or organizations that you really feel strongly for. Like I felt really strongly for the Port of Long Beach. Just like to keep following up with them to see where they are in the process. Um, I know LinkedIn is a good tool nowadays to try to reach out to someone in the organization and trying to get some kind of connections to help you, you know, try to move on in the process. Um, I know some things are easier said than done, but I, I think the general justice to just keep trying. You think? Yeah, totally. Exactly what Toki said. I totally agree with. And yeah, uh, just to piggyback off it a little bit, the only other thing I'd maybe add is that, yeah, you know, just sending like jobs through Indeed and stuff is so like, I started to get frustrated just saying th th things to the internet because yeah, I wouldn't get any responses. So then I started going to places physically and like handing it. And at least like, I'm like, like, okay, at least I'm seeing you get it. But still, yeah, the way I got the, I found a uh, like part-time job at the local, like uh, elementary school right by my house. So private school is just through uh, like a family member. So maybe at the very, sometimes at least knowing someone who knows the person, you can at least get an answer out of. But I also, I think Toki's advice was really stand out you just got yeah just keep trying and I found it a little bit more relieving yeah when at least I talked to someone who knew someone and then I actually got an answer back because yeah not hearing anything was always incredibly frustrating I don't know how to you know get beyond that uh, besides maybe knowing someone or like following up until they finally you know do um, yeah great question yeah Definitely a struggle during the job search. Mm -hmm. I think just pos you know, positive affirmations and taking breaks when you need to. That's good too. Any other questions? Yeah, if any other alumni I want to share, uh, tips that really helped them or strategies they used uh, would be wonderful too. So it's like an open floor. Questions, comments. Especially with, it seems like with COVID now, a lot of mm -hmm. stuff is online. So it's a bit harder to go into places or, but yeah. I feel like too that there might be more opportunities with more remote work nowadays too so especially it depends on your field uh, I think a lot but especially if you're interested in business I think LinkedIn is a really great resource uh, it seems like mm -hmm. um, but yeah. yeah I got to talk to um, someone in HR at Port of Long Beach um, it's been my like HR point of contact since like I turned in my application and we've become kind of close um, during the year I've been working there and she definitely says it's become way more competitive because everything is online. That means for the same remote job that might have been regional to, for example, LA, now someone in like Washington or like Virginia can apply there too. So it's definitely become more saturated and I think it's easier to get discouraged because I mean, it's not your fault. It's because of this pandemic that everything is getting super competitive and you just have to find ways to make yourself um, stand out compared to everyone else. And I think personally reaching out to like employers probably helps with that. Okay. Yeah, there's... Oh, sorry. No, no, it seems like people are good. <laughs> yeah, and you know, it's already, it's been over an mm -hmm. hour. So uh, if there's any, oh yeah, we can go to the next slide. Oops. Wrong button. I keep going the wrong way. <laughs> Tokyo, I'm so, ah! You're backwards. <laughs> How did I go thing. backwards? <laughs> I'm such a boomer. What the, what? There we go. 
<laughs> I was using the scroll pad. Yeah, so if you guys have any other questions, um, here's our emails. And mm. oh, I didn't put my LinkedIn. What's my LinkedIn? Ethan Wynn. It's just close, so just if you just put an Ethan Wynn in LinkedIn, I'll be one of them. <laughs> that comes up. Yeah, I don't know how many others there are. But yeah, feel free to message us too. Um, you know, if you have any questions and if we could help, um, like I said, like I said, our stories are, you know, very anecdotal, anecdotal. like it's, you know, these are just our two experiences. Um, but, you know, if this was meant to be almost just like a coffee chat, you know, like if we went to Starbucks, you know, in the before times before COVID and just talked about, you know, how life was going and how our six months were after college. And so, yeah, this was, you know, there's no magic formula, you know, there's no right or wrong way to do it. It's just, you got to try it your way and you got to, you know, be, um, be ready for the ups and downs and to, so by hearing other people's stories it might better prepare you for what's ahead. And so we wanted to really just talk about, uh, you know, the six months that maybe not too many people talk about or like to share. It's also not easy to share, you know, the, the not so great parts of after college. Uh, but I think that if you ride it through and like Toki and I, you know, after our six months, things turned around. And so there's hope, there's light at the end of the tunnel. Um, yeah, any other, that's my closing thoughts. Is there anything else you'd like to add, Toki? Um, like I said earlier, I'm in touch with someone in HR who would love to help anyone. So if you, you know, wanna, or I'm also open to, helping you with like resumes and cover letters, interviews, just send me a message on like Facebook or LinkedIn or email and I'll help you as much as I can. If there's something I can't answer, I'll refer to my, uh, you know, HR person to help you too. So it's really tough out there. So I want to do anything to help as well. Yeah. <laughs> I think that's a great way to leave it. I want to, I want to piggyback off that. Me too. <laughs> you know, that's the point of being an alumni. We're here to help. And, even though we're not, you know, physically in the Circle K, you know, family anymore, we're not in college anymore. Um, you know, this is what being an alumni is all about. And so we're happy to help and we're happy to be here. Um, so please don't hesitate to reach out uh, if you do have any questions or need any advice. Um, that's what we're here for. And we're happy if you learn from our, you know, our, you know, mistakes or are you know difficult times uh that just makes it so much more meaningful for us just to be able to share and help people through our own story so yeah thank you so much for coming <laughs> yeah thank uh -oh. you